Trevor Regis. I'm a hearing researcher based in music at Queen's University Belfast. I worked with NI Opera during their gory Sweeney Todd show, uh, working with them on the anatomy of the human voice. Uh, we did a show at the fabulous NI Science Festival. Since you probably do a lot of talking and maybe even some singing yourself, I thought it'd be interesting to look at how our voices work. To fully participate in this, you'll need some kind of tube, like a toilet roll, uh, your voice and your brain. So uh, pause the video, um, quick find those things, uh, toilet roll, voice, brain. See you in two ticks. Okay, so today we're going to learn all about how your voice works, and at the heart of your voice is your larynx. You'll find your larynx round about here, but you might find it more easily on someone with a deep voice, because bigger larynxes help you sing lower notes. Your larynx is probably about half the size of mine, so you'll be much better at singing the high notes. Somewhere over the rainbow. <clears throat> In the larynx are vocal folds, which work a bit like my lips when I blow a raspberry. The air uh, blows my lips apart, and the same air flowing through them brings them back together again. A bit like how a door is slammed shut uh, when there is air flowing through it. I have a very high-tech camera that will let you see the process uh, in slow motion. At higher pitches, a lot of muscles work together to stretch out and thin the vocal folds, uh, and this makes higher pitches. And then as it gets shorter and flabbier, you get lower notes. This seems like a perfect excuse to try and make some weird noises in your own home, so give it a go yourself. One weird thing about the larynx is it doesn't have any nerves in it. Nerves send messages to the brain, which let us feel things, which means that we can't feel anything in our vocal cords, despite the fact that we're doing all this complicated stuff when we talk and when we sing. This can be a bit of a problem if we do any damage to our vocal cords because we can't feel it. It doesn't hurt. Has this ever happened to you? If you've maybe lost your voice or you're speaking a bit hoarsely, but you don't have a sore throat, uh, then you might have experienced this. It's really tempting just to keep talking or keep singing, but it's much better to give the voice a rest and let it recover. If a larynx was all we had, then all speech would sound like this. Ah, 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 ah. But we also have a mouth and a tongue and lips that sort of get in the way of, of the sound and shape it in lots of different ways. You can think of your mouth and nose as being like a tube stuck on the end of your vocal cords. And in fact, if you put a toilet roll over your lips, you can use your hands uh, to uh, shape the sound and make a wah if you do a raspberry or sing down the toilet roll. <laughs> Try it yourself. How can we make a wah sound just by moving our hands? Well, this is where we get technical, so fasten your seatbelt. You can think of one sound as being made up of lots of little sounds, uh, which each sound a bit like a whistle. I call these pure tones or sine waves, but for today we'll just call them whistles. And if we could whistle really precisely, we could pile all these whistles on top of each other and build up to any other sound. For example, so hopefully you heard each of those little whistles enter one at a time and it didn't sound too much like a voice until they all started to wobble. When it started to wobble, your clever brain thought it's really unlikely that all those individual whistles would go up and down at the same time. 
So it guessed that they might just come from the same sound source. Um, when your brain put all the different bits of the puzzle together, it realised that it was a human voice. Shall we listen to that again? So, back to the toilet tube. When you put your hands over the end of it, it muffles some of the whistles while letting other ones get through a bit more easily. And this makes the difference between a woo and an ah. And we can make all the vowels we need just by moving our lips, our jaw, our tongue. I... And opera singers do this and more to be heard over an orchestra. The issue is that you're on stage, you want to be heard by the audience, but there's 50 musicians in the pit in the orchestra trying to make lots of noise as well. So you've got to be heard over them. It would be tempting to really squeeze out a sound or shout really loud, but uh, it doesn't work very well. And worse, it could damage your vocal folds. And because they don't hurt, you might not know about it till you wake up the next morning a bit hoarse. So instead, opera singers spend years training to find just the right shape of their chest, their body, their mouth, their tongue, so that selected whistles ping out and are really loud and they can cut right through the orchestra uh, even when they're all playing at the same time. So this is how opera singers can make themselves heard over an orchestra. And that's just the vowel sounds. The opera singers also have to work on all of the hisses and explosions of the English language and French and German and Italian uh, so that the audience can hear every word. And when you say words slowly, you can sort of realise how many strange sounds there are in languages. There's even little silences, like in the middle of strange sounds, there's a little gap there. So why don't you have a go saying a word really slowly and see what strange sounds are all part of it. So your homework is make a toilet roll, say wah wah wah, Ugh. and say words really slowly um, to find out all the complex things you have to do when talking quickly. Talking quickly. Quick, 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 talking, quick.